Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours from God our Father through our Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horb Lutheran Church here in Chapin, South Carolina. And each day, Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to dwelling with you in the Word, which is a simple practice of reading a portion of Scripture, uh, seeing what uh, jumps out at you, asking a question or two, and finding out if there's a nudge that God has for you in your life's spiritual journey. Today is uh, March 13th. It's Saturday. And uh, today is also going to be Daylight Savings Time night. So just remember that tonight, this evening, uh, that you spring forward or move those clocks ahead, which basically means you're going to lose an hour in the morning. But hopefully uh, you'll adjust well. So blessings on your day. As we follow our devotional booklet for the season of Lent, we're going to be looking at a passage that I believe Pastor Joanna Gregg read for you yesterday. It's Matthew 6, verse 9, and it simply focuses on um, the verse we're looking at today is, Hallowed be thy name, or holy is your name. And so we're going to dwell on holiness today, God's holiness in our life. So blessings as we do that. Uh, in the Bible, God is uh, so holy that humans cannot, you know, stand to be in direct presence. And so God appears often as smoke or fire. God appears in a vision or a dream in a sense through somebody else, uh, an angel. God appears as a burning bush to Moses, um, and God is so pure and holy that we just sent, sent, we can't simply compare. Uh, years ago, I probably, man, a long time ago, there was a great movie, uh, Indiana Jones, is a series, but it starred Harrison Ford and some other wonderful actors, and it depicted this essence of God. In a sense, there's a search for this long-lost um, Ark of the Covenant, which the Israelites had carried with them through the wilderness and later put, you know, in the temple. Uh, the Holy of Holies, that only the priest could go um, and be in. And it was said to contain God's essence uh, because they put the two stone tablets of God from Mount Sinai on there, the law. Um, and then there's this scene where it's found uh, in this movie. And the greedy people who finally get it and think they've got God's power, when they open it up, something magnificent happens and the people nearby are just kind of evaporated. There's uh, this sense of God's presence is so awesome. We as human beings can't stand it. There's too much holiness, too much sacredness. And that's a movie. But yet we are made in God's image. And God's spirit lives in us through baptism. So definitely today, this passage um, is just about pondering this understanding of who we are, who God is, and what is God calling us to do. So we, we are people of holiness. Our lives are set apart through this baptismal covenant we have now that we're part of God's family, and we're set apart to live a life that reflects what God calls us to do. And we get that through, through Jesus. Um, so think about in um, the Bible, can you think of uh, when biblical characters experienced God's presence. That might be an interesting exercise for you, you know, when they experience God's sacredness in their life. We think of Adam and Eve, you know, in the beginning, they may or may not have known any better. They act as if it was kind of routine. There they are in the garden, they hear God's voice, and they know to run because they've done some things that they shouldn't have done, but they have been in conversation with God, and it's not until they get kicked out of the garden that they realize how nice and how much presence that was for them as God's people. Then you have Abraham and Sarah with the pregnancy and the birth of Isaac. They thought that could never have happened. Or the call of David. Remember, he was picked out among his better-looking candidate uh, brothers. And even though he was a small with a shepherd boy with a ruddy complexion. Or there's Mary and Joseph who listened to and followed God's announcement for them to be parents and all the obstacles that meant for them to do because they clung to that message of God, that this is the promise that God is going to do for you. Um, or we think about um, the three disciples that seen Jesus when he was transfigured on the mountain, and they said, hey, this is so awesome. It's good to be here. Let's build some special tents so we can stay here. Um, that was the presence of God. We think of Easter morning's empty tomb. And that whole scene on Easter. Or Jesus' visit to the two disciples on the road to Emmaus, whose hearts burned, they said. Didn't our hearts burn when he was with us? How come we didn't recognize him? 
or Jesus appearing to the disciples behind locked doors. These are holy moments. These are sacred moments where there is an experience of God's presence. And we, we kind of know this experience of sacredness, and often, though not often enough, we think, um, we experience it as a pure form of the fruit of the Spirit. You know, the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those are listed in uh, Galatians 5, chapter, chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, I think. Um, and so for me, that's how I often look to see, wow, that is one of those fruits of the Spirit that I just experienced. That must be holy ground. And, and something about those moments that we begin to see, you know, like the birth of a baby or a beautiful sunrise, or even standing at the grave with a family of a person who's lived this incredible life and we're celebrating their life at the same time we're mourning their death and we're hearing God's words of accompaniment through both. That's a holy moment. Finding a person with whom you feel transforms your heart beyond anything you've known and maybe wanting to be with that person. Completing a task that took time and energy and special effort on your part becomes kind of a sacred thing for you, like a uh, do-it-yourself project or hiking the Appalachian Trail or building a house, working with a ministry team at our church or going to camp uh, or being on a mission trip. We have these experiences that, wow, that was there's something about that thing we did that helped us feel and know God's presence. So holiness happens when we experience God's already present presence in our midst. And as we grow in our faith, the sense of God's presence also grows. This awareness that God is present grows because God promises to be with us. And so we turn from questioning God's presence and we turn towards seeking, asking, and knocking because we know God is present. And so it's in our struggle, this presence of God we experience uh, and identify through faith becomes like a a peace amidst the storm, maybe, or a silver lining in a cloud, or a window when a door closes, we like to say, or a light in a dark tunnel. And it becomes for us like a blessed assurance that God is there somehow. Let's look for God, as one hymn describes it, you know, blessed assurance. Or, um, or in our living, this presence becomes for us then foundational. It becomes the basis to how we live. And then um, it becomes like another hymn we sing, the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ. And so as we begin to see, and as we begin to experience and ponder this holiness that we are called to, that we are a part of, we realize that it's reflected in all of God's creation, the environment and animals and people and the earth and the universe. And so how do we react to such a sight, to such an experience? Our response to God's holiness, to God's making us holy and set apart for living the way of faith, is found in the final command that Jesus gave the night before he offered his holiness to be crucified for our sake. He said, have compassion, have care for one another, have kindness. And the word he uses is agape or love. They shall know that you're my, my disciples by your love. So as we dwell on this, hallowed be your name today, let it nudge you to consider how you are made in God's name, that you're made in God's image, that you are sacred, that you are holy. All right, so there is a hymn that I found, uh, number 473, called Holy, 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 and it goes like, it reminded me of this, and it goes like this. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart is glad to say the words, you are holy God. And that's it. You just repeat it over and over again. May your day be holy. May you know that you're holy as well. Let us pray. Almighty God, who gives us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and forgives us all our sin, strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a great day.